Hi everyone, bit squashy down here. Just finished making some soap. Quite often I see on a few soapy forums that I'm on, people asking how do you clean up after making your soap? So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time and just show you what I do. Now there are various methods out there, but as I said, this is just what I do and I find it the easiest way for me. You might find that other people often say, just bung everything together, put it in a bag, let it saponify and wash it up the next day. And that's fab and it is a really good way. For me, I soap in my kitchen, so I like to have everything cleared up as soon as I've finished. Come on, let's go wash some dishes. So the first thing you always want to do, and I'm sure everybody already knows this, is to scrape your containers as well as you possibly can. Whether that's actually into the top of your soap or into a little spare guest soap or something, it doesn't matter, you need to get them scraped as clear as possible. Now for me, as far as I'm concerned with washing up, I see water as the enemy. Now remember, this is really at the moment just a combination of lye and oils. So for that purposes, we're still gonna keep our protective clothing on. And also, we just don't wanna be putting any of this oil down the sink, so into the drains at all. So therefore, we're not gonna be using any water until we're sure all of that oil has gone. So the first thing I'm gonna do after I've got all my scraped container is, I use these nice fluffy, um, microfiber cloths. I used to use just old rags, bits of t-shirt and things, and I didn't find they worked as well. So I did actually invest into some nice fluffy microfiber cloths, and I think they're brilliant. And I just use them completely dry. I'm just gonna go through and literally wipe everything down and get every last scrap of that off. Okay, so those should be looking pretty well, almost as clean as you could put them away. And this would be the point that we could now put them into some water. Now a couple of things just we move on to water. Um, I didn't use a squeeze bottle, but I just deliberately mucked one up. Everyone's pet hate is the squeeze bottle. So again, for me, it's, it's mainly about getting it scraped out. Now, I know I would have normally done my scraping out by now, but I'm just going to literally just do this. I actually use this, and I, I've shown it on my channel before. Um, it's called a mini sapoon, and it's from a company called Dream Farm. I'll leave the link in the description below. And I like it because it's really good actually going in and scraping and getting all of those bits out of your squeeze bottle. And for me, it's better than a spatula because it will actually carry it out for you. Now, normally I would scrape out a squeeze bottle, as I said, as I was making my soap, but here I did just deliberately muck this squeeze bottle up just so we could put this into this video. Okay, so as you can see, that works really, really well. Another option for squeeze bottles is that people often line them. Um, and the linings that you can use, sometimes in your packaging, you'll get those sort of like little pillow things that are full of air. And often they're recyclable and everything. So you can just take those out, chop the tops off those, and they fit beautifully into um, a squeeze bottle. I'm not a massive fan on them because I find if your squeeze bottle's not completely full, it sort of stops the flow of your batter coming out quite so well. So I must admit, I'm more of a, um, empty, you know, normal squeeze bottle like this, and I'll just scrape it out afterwards. And then moving on to the stick blender. Now, I know you're going to go, ha ha, you've got no water. Um, with my stick blender, I literally clean it 
as soon as I finished emulsifying. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll probably see that typically I blend just till I get to emulsion, and then I never use the stick blender anymore. So as soon as I've got to that emulsion, I will literally take my stick blender apart, don't do this while it's still attached, and I will get my cloth and I will wipe down the shaft of the stick blender and all inside, oh, <laughs> he spilt that then, all inside, the stick blender like that and just get it as clean as possible as soon as I finish with it then I'll get some really hot water and a little bit of um, washing up liquid and I will just go in reattach my stick blender and give that a little blitz and then that'll just be left there sitting until I'm ready to do the rest of my washing up okay so we're now at the sink dead exciting I know um, at this point I'm now going to swap um, my gloves. I always reuse my gloves, they're never supposed to be disposable, so I literally just wash them off. Make sure they're nice and clean. And dry them. And then in my cupboard, I've just got uh, like a coat hanger I've sort of screwed to a door with some hooks on it. And I just take my gloves and I hook them all in there. And then next time I want them, they're ready for me. So swapping into me washing up gloves. Okay, to this point, I'm just going to run a nice hot bowl of water. And to be honest, there's, there should be no soap or oils or anything left on your containers. So you should just be able to go through and just wash them out. And by this point, they really should be squeaky clean. Okay, you've got no oils coming off or anything. There we are. Now all of those are completely lovely and squeaky clean. None of that, you know, if you wash up your soapy stuff and you find, you know, quite often I hear people saying, oh, it's all horrible and oily and everything. You know, at this stage it really shouldn't be. Let's do the horrible stuff, the weird stuff. So remember the old squeeze bottle? Not entirely sure what I've done with my lid. Haha, <laughs> found it. Right. Now the squeeze bottles are a little bit of pain, and I must admit the squeeze bottle is something that maybe sometimes I do potentially just leave it to sit till it turns to soap. Just really just from the point of not wanting any oils to go down my sink. But if I'm doing it on the same time, which I must admit I do usually do, again it's a case of trying to get as much of that soap out as possible, we've already done a good squeeze, get yourself a cloth <laughs> Gloves that fit would be good, wouldn't it? That's the joy of having small hands. And get your cloth all the way in there with the dry cloth again, remember? And round and round and round it goes. Till we've got all the soap out. The cap, the same. Now I've got let me find them. I'll put links to these in the description. I've got all sorts of like, they're sort of like bottle cleaner, pipe cleaners, these sort of things, and they're brilliant. I'll put links to them in the description. Um, and I've got some of these are really, really skinny, tiny weeny ones that you can actually use for, you know, your icing tips and things. So again, you can just go through with one of those diddly little things and push that brush through. And all the time, just getting that soap off before it goes anywhere near the water. Okay. And then to finish off that squeeze bottle, we've pretty well got all the soap off now. So yeah, we probably are gonna have a little bit of oil, but come on, we've got a tiny weeny bit, haven't we? shake and then I'll get myself not this cloth because it's all soapy and horrible I'll probably get myself a different one and I have a whole bunch of these really scrappy rags 
So again, I'll just take that. <laughs> Probably not make such a hash of shoving it in the bottle. And now with it wet, a little tiny bit of soap. And shake it with that rag inside. Okay, lovely and clean. Other thing, I've got one of these again. I'll leave the link. It's a really, really thin headed scrubbing brush, um, and you can see as long as you've got a wide mouth squeeze bottle you can get right inside those squeeze bottles. So yeah, these really thin brushes are brilliant as well. So there's my squeeze bottle, all nice and clean. And then lastly, that stick blender. Well, we know this is pretty well clean because we've already cleaned it, haven't we? But this is where I like this tool. Got this, you can get all sorts of them. Look, I've got another one here and a dangly. <laughs> and these are really good for just going round inside and getting right under that stick blender blade. So you're never one of those people that goes, ooh, I've got them weird floaty bits in my soap. Okay, so in. And we are now done. And the good thing that you'll see as well is that when you finish the washing up, I'm not entirely sure how well you're going to be able to see this. Can you notice that there's no oil slick on the top? If I pour my water out and pick up all the spatulas that I should have washed up. Can you see that because I got all of the oil off first, there's none of that hideous slick of oil around my basin. Um, none of it's going down the sink, so we're all nice and safe. Then all you've got to do is dry up. I'm not going to show you drying up. I can't believe you want to see that. Dry everything up and put it away. Now the towels, the towels that you've used maybe while you're making your soap, wiping down your sides and all that sort of stuff. I just literally gather all of those together and I just either pop them straight into my washing machine if I'm not going to be doing any washing for a day or so, or otherwise I just put them away to the side in a bag or something, somewhere safe, because remember they've still got raw soap on them, and leave them for at least 24 hours. After that 24 hours, 36 hours, whatever, you'll find you'll open them up and I'll have some soap. Hang on, I think I might have one. I know, you're really thrilled to probably see, but there we are, my dirty <laughs> washing. This is the soap I made previously, and I actually used this towel. I'd been using it whilst I was making soap, and I actually, uh, so it got messy, and then I used it to seep pop my soap in the oven, so I wrapped it in this, and as you can see, the soap is actually sort of saponified um, overnight. So this now, after a day or so, they're nice and safe to wash. And again, you're not going to be putting any oils down your drain. So just bung them in the washing machine. With your other washing is absolutely fine. Um, and off you go. So there we are. We're all washed up. Hopefully you found this helpful. I know it's not the most exciting video in the world, but I do see the question being asked quite a lot. So hopefully it was all good. Join me again when I make some soup soon.